All right, folks, let's get into uh, the red papaya and GNU radio. And for those of you that really don't know what I'm talking about, um, why don't you see my previous videos with all the crazy signals? And uh, basically, this, what I'm going to go over is how I did all those signals that you saw. So if you want a demo or, you know, what this thing can do, go check out the previous videos. For those of you that have seen all that and now you're wondering to yourself, how the hell did he do that? Well, you found the right video. So again, what I have here is the red papaya. Again, go see my other video where I talk about that, how to go find one, buy one, whatever. Basically, it's a $300 unit. It comes built in with two DACs. Uh, that's sending signal output, and two ADCs, sending input. I don't really care about the ADCs. There's better receivers out there, but what I was really interested in is the exciter part. And I, using this with GNU Radio, I've been terribly impressed. Um, it's probably one of the best uh, HF uh, IQ modulator exciters uh, that money can buy. All right, like I said, this is going to get into or detail the gory details of how you could possibly turn the red papaya into a kick-ass HF exciter. Now, the output of the red papaya is not going to cover the world. It's about 10 dBm of power. So if you want to get to the 100 watts, which most uh, turnkey amateur radio units can do, you'll need a uh, 40 dB uh, amplifier. Now, for some of you that say, yeah, right, I'm never going to do all that, let me just explain a simple concept here. Um, you could basically buy this unit and then go buy uh, an HF rig from you know any of the sites out there that say they do 100 watts, Basically, get the schematics of the of the unit, find where the power amp is, basically, and plug this thing right into it. And now your transmitter can do basically whatever you want. <laughs> All right, back to seriousness now here. So if you got the red papaya, um, we don't want to blow away the uh, micro SD card that came with it. You know, that way you can still use it as a scope and simple signal generator. Um, this is going to be an entirely new image. So I would recommend getting a couple of these uh, micro SD cards. And you want to get the one with the speed 10. I believe the red papaya needs this speed spec for it to work. Pretty simple. They're on Amazon. It's seven bucks. So, you know, you get there, get the 16 gig or 32 gig. I don't think that terribly matters. Just I think the main thing is the speed has to be 10. All right. Now you got your card. Now we need to go to this uh, web page. I'll have a link at the bottom of the video. But basically this guy, Paul or pa Pavel Demon did this uh, tremendous firmware work to turn this red papaya into what's essentially called a digital IQ modulator. Now I circled these guys down here at the bottom. These are the sample rates that you have to pick and basically they're integer multiples of the uh, final 125 megahertz uh, DAC. So uh, we'll get into it, but when you're doing the GNU radio uh, sync, you're gonna wanna have, you're gonna have to set the sample rate to uh, one of these fixed values. So I picked 50 kilohertz, but you can, I guess, go up to uh, 1.25 megahertz. So if you need to do something bigger than 1.25 megahertz, well, you might as well hit stop right now because we're not going to cover that. But if you want to do 50, 50 kilohertz bandwidth, which is way more than, you know, for AM or lower sideband or upper sideband, well, stay tuned. This video is for you. All right. So scroll down to the GNU radio part. You're going to want to download this uh, zip file. Now, if you have Linux and you're installing on Linux, you can follow all these instructions basically to uh, basically get the image file. And then he gives instructions here on how to install GNU Radio for those of you that are running Linux. 
Uh, I use Windows. Shoot me, but I just like Windows better. But I will say this, folks. When we're making this micro SD card, you need to do that part in Linux, okay? So we need to uh, we need to do this part in Linux. Um, <laughs> so sorry. If you're running Linux, well, good for you. You're all set. If you're running Windows and you don't know, know nothing about Linux, uh, I would find someone that has a Linux PC and just go make the micro SD card on their PC. If you want to do it, you can go install Linux Mint, an ISO USB drive, and boot your PC off Linux USB. Plenty of sites that document this, but if that sounds absolutely crazy to you and you would never do that, well, then just go find someone that's running Linux on their computer with an SD card slot. Go to the website's prior, download the zip file, unzip the zip file, put the contents on the micro SD, take the card out of his PC, give him a beer, whatever, pay him 30 bucks and you're set. If, if you don't know anyone that doesn't have Linux, well, you know what? Contact me. I'll mail you a micro SD card and uh, we'll agree upon a price of about $100 to $1,000. <laughs> All right. Again, I'm not joking here. You need to use Linux to download the zip file extract the zip file and copy the contents of that folder onto the micro SD card. Basically, we're making a bootable uh, micro SD that the red papaya is going to boot. And these images that are going to be on this card are going to be all the custom firmware that Pavel wrote to turn the red papaya into essentially a digital IQ modulator. And, and it will be the best HF exciter you have ever seen in your life. Did I say that kind of excited? Anyway, so once the micro SD card is installed, you can then switch back to Windows for you Windows users. If you're still if you're a Linux user, well then stay with Linux. I don't really care. All I'm saying is to make this micro SD card, you got to follow those instructions above in Linux. Okay. All right, so now you got the card installed back in the red papaya. Uh, that red papaya now is going to default to an IP address of 192.168.1.100. Now to talk to it, I just direct connect it. Uses the red Ethernet cable, plugged it right into the red papaya, and plugged the other end directly into my computer. Now I had to do a couple things on my computer. I had to make a static IP and I turned my computer into uh, 192.168.1.50. Now I still use the Wi-Fi for internet. The ethernet port on my laptop, I don't use. So this is a perfect uh, scenario. If you do use your ethernet port for internet and you don't have another port, uh, I don't know if you want to buy this then. But if you got a spare ethernet port, then this is an absolute game changer. All right, I'm not going to get into this. There's plenty of sites online, but we'll quickly go over this. This is how you make a static IP uh, on your e on your PC. All right, you know here you go to get to this uh, network thingy here. Click the Ethernet button. Go over to change adapter options. All right, find the Ethernet guy here. Right click on it and select properties. All right, go highlight this uh, Internet Protocol version 4, got that, then click Properties, and then make your screen look just like this. And now that Ethernet port on your computer that you never use will now have a static IP of .50. And you're now ready to go to talk to the red papaya. All right, let's plug your Ethernet port uh, directly into the red papaya, power on the red papaya unit, Give it about a one to two minutes uh, boot up there. Once uh, you start seeing a little orange light flashing on the ethernet port of the red papaya, that kind of lets you know it's it's woken up. Fire up a web browser, folks. Type in this uh, address here. Hopefully this web page like this will pop up on your browser. If it does, man, you are ready to go. And then click this SDR transceiver guy there. 
then you'll see this, the SDR transceiver is ready. And that's it. Your Red Papaya now is ready to accept streaming IQ samples from GNU Radio. Now, to, to stream the samples out of GNU Radio to the Red Papaya, uh, I'm using this Osmocom sync. Really a great uh, package here, whoever did all this. But anyway, we'll be using this block here to stream the IQ samples to the Red Papaya. All right. Now, you have to double click on that sync, and these are all the gory details to make it tell it that it's going to be talking to a red papaya. Uh, to talk to port one of the red papaya, put in this string right here, uh, put the sample rate 50 kilohertz, and this guy here is the frequency. So I'm coming out at uh, 765 kilohertz, so you can make that, you know. 3 megahertz, 14 megahertz, 27 megahertz. All, you basically, your frequency range is 0 to 60 megahertz. These other fields, I don't really think they're used, but go ahead and populate them. But I, I have a feeling the only, the only fields that are really used for the red papaya are what I have circled here. Now, like I said, the red papaya has two outputs. I'm only using the one. But if you want to send signals out to port 2, you change this port here to 1002. I think I document that. Yep, there you go. Change that to port 2 up here if you want to send signals out to the other port. 1 was good enough to me. There it is. All right, see the link below? I uploaded all the GNU scripts for AM modulation, lower sideband, and spectral images. Basically, I'm uploading the GNU radio scripts that made those crazy videos before this video. So now you can see exactly uh, how I did it. Now, I know this is about the red papaya, but let me just put a little advertisement in here. Uh, this device, this AirSpy HF Plus Discovery, just go to this website. I mean, it, but this, this thing is absolutely the best receiver I have ever seen. Folks, I literally had a coax connected to this thing, not even connected to the antenna yet, and I was still able to pick up radio signals and not just strong am broadcast i was able to pick up amateur radio signals with basically the antenna not even connected to this thing this thing is so sensitive the noise floor is down at the minus 140 dbm i mean absolutely amazing it does have uh pre-selectors however if you really want to turn this into an amazing unit Bandpass filters in front of it are going to go a long way. But it's the thing that makes this thing so powerful, folks, is the noise floor is absolutely rock bottom. And when you're trying to pick up weak signals, folks, the thing that's going to kill you is the thermal noise inside the receiver. Now, I pair this with a loop antenna because a loop is... Uh, much less noisy. Uh, it will probably work with a dipole. However, they are very more susceptible to getting all the local RFI from noise and background stuff. But if you live in the middle of nowhere, then a dipole, uh, you know, 30, 40 feet up in the air, this will be amazing. This really is an amazing receiver. I can't speak highly of it anymore. And it's about the size of a pack of matches. It really is absolutely amazing. And I run this with SDR console. Uh, man, I mean, it is for HF people out there. Wow. Wow. That's all I can say. All right, back to the red papaya. Let's quickly talk about here. Um, what, what this uh, Mr. Pavel did inside his, the firmware of the Red Papaya. So basically GNU Radio is sending IQ samples here through this red guy. We're upsampling through these FERS CIC interpolators. We're getting the data up to the final 125 megahertz rate. We're doing all the complex IQ modulation all in firmware, all digitally. We're taking that final composite and sending that to the DAC here, and then it goes out and becomes an analog signal out to the real world for you all to see and listen to. But this is what made this red papaya for me so amazing. 
all this modulation is being done digitally. You know, one of the problems with the Hack RFs, the Blade RFs, uh, even the Edis Research Units, all the IQ modulation is analog, right? So you're never gonna you're gonna have IQ leakage. The quadrature won't be exact. It's it's a nasty problem. But when you do it all in digital like this, man, it's 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 almost like textbook. It's so ideal. So that's why my preference. I prefer this type of architecture to be superior than having two analog mixers and having all the leakage and tones and spurs that come out of those typical products. So if you're thinking about making an HF uh, exciter and you're gonna decide whether between the Hack RF or the Red Papaya, please, please pick the Red Papaya. With this firmware, it, it is amazing. The Hack RF is basically a hack. It's a hack. I'll be honest. It's you know, it's it's a it's a low dollar thing. It's okay. I mean, it, I'll get me wrong, but it's not going to blow any RF specs away. It's got spurs out the yin yang, phase noise problems, shitty oscillators. I mean, I can go on and on. I'm not going to bore you, but um, this red papaya, folks, is amazing. So hopefully everyone got that. I'm not going to bore on the details here. You know, if, if you think this is not impressive or something stupid, well, then I guess you're just a boring person. I really can't help you. But if you want to see what this red papaya unit can do, see my previous videos, you know, and there'll be more to come. But all that crazy crap in the waterfall, folks, it, it, I made it with this hardware, okay? This isn't some white paper sim. It was real signals going into a receiver. Um, and I'm giving you this knowledge so that you can use it. I also circle the sample rates up here. Again, when you're setting up GNU Radio, you got to pick your sample rates to be, you know, one of these fixed values. See the link below. I got details to the site. I got links to my stuff for the GNU Radio strip, strips, scripts. <laughs> All right, folks, that's it. I mean, get started out there. Go, go buy this thing and set it up. Have some fun.